So let me just check the recording is on this time because uh, apparently I did this video before, just that I didn't. Um, you probably have seen that there is a new hot lab a series of, of special events online in the ACC game. Um, and especially there's a hot lab stint using the Porsche RSR on Barcelona, where apparently just the people on site in Barcelona during the final can win a podium reel or something similar like that. I uh, was lucky enough to, to be on first place right now. Uh, I thought I'd just share some of the info about how to actually do that. Uh, the Porsche is kind of a special car in the game, the only one with the engine in the back, which it's makes it kind of... Well, you drive it differently, let's say that. Um, there's just fixed setups available in this one, so there's not much you can do. I usually, I, I tried both, there's not much of a difference. Uh, let's just go with a safe setup, well, because I'm talking right now, right? It's easier to, to handle the car. Um, important to talk about is the ABS setting which I will change once I'm in the car I will put it on three the traction control on the other hand I'll rather put it on one um, you really want as few engagement of the traction control as possible while you can still handle the car because every engine cut or power cut just takes away too much too much acceleration and therefore lap time while there isn't really a situation where the car would spin or the rear step out on you too much you will actually see me turning off the traction control for some turns because uh, there's some, some some situations where the traction control kicks in without it being necessary really just on on a bump or so where just the inside tire spins not the outside one so you still remain the grip but still get the engine cut and it just costs you i don't know a couple hundreds here and there they add up so it could be one or two tenths uh, on the whole lap. Uh, brake bias is fine on this one. Temperatures and pressures are important though. Um, so since you don't have options to change those, you just want to pretty much push the car as much as you can to build the temperature and pressure that you need. Um, I'll talk you through. First thing you will notice is that going into the last corner right ahead of me, I will accelerate and then hit the brake without locking up the tires because that again would uh, create some uh, flat spots or graining and something like that on the tire which is well it's simulated in that game of course but more importantly I heat the brakes up a little already and the brakes heat the uh, rim and the rim heats the tire increasing the pressure increasing tire temperature and uh, we want that definitely and especially for turn one if the brakes are cold in the first last which they still are even though i do that um you you brake a little earlier on the first lap though um every, every tiny bit helps right so i i will increase the or i just just warm the brakes a little so i can at least break say only five meters less uh Five meters earlier than, than I have to on a on a perfectly fine lap. So now you can see I've been waiting too long. The pressure are low, so I actually restart that and then hit the track right away. Uh, and you'll see the temperatures and pressures are better now. Start the engine and go. Hit the brakes. Stay on the brakes. Just really, you can see them heating just slightly. And then we're off. Just a little lift there in the first time around will be better in the next lap. Traction control is set for one, ABS to three. Uh, the brake price is fine at 52. And for the first lap, we will break, be breaking around 110 meters because it really takes some time for the brakes to get the bite. Little lift going into the left kink there and then just ease out of the throttle into that long right hander before you can floor it again. This this is a bit wide, but still all right. Uh, here we break when the billboard disappears. Stay inside here, because I feel it's faster. And then here's a little crest, and right after we just floor the brakes and try to carry a lot of speed in here. That was a bit too early, actually. Stay in fourth here. And now I just turn off the traction control for that little bit over the curb. 
then throw it in here. You can actually be confident with that car. And then here it's very important to get it exactly right. There is very much time in the hairpin. That was about alright. I short shift out of the hairpin because uh, the first gear just triggers too much of the traction control. I force a little understeer through here using the inside curb. And once I hit the limiter brake for the last one, short shift again. And traction control off to get that extra rotation in the last corner. Back on, very important because I tend to forget that. Uh, the lap time isn't too good, you're aiming for 44 low to zero. Now we can break at 105. Be way more aggressive into here. Little lift to correct the line. Fourth is important, carry in, ease out the throttle. Stay inside and then it's hard to find the point where you hit the throttle fully, but you'll be there in a couple laps. Special here, I can shift up and once I'm in third, I just deactivate the traction control. Gives a little extra. That is better. I don't like to use, I uh, like to go right there because I feel the, the curb still cost you kind of some time. That was a bit conservative, still faster than that before. Uh, not ideal. You see it in the delta, just lost a bit there. That was late on the brakes, but just worked out. Don't use too much curb here. Go down to seconds with a little uh, throttle blip. Go 50, 70, and then 100% throttle. Just not flat on it. Will trigger the traction control too much. It's really all about the close to the limiter. Traction control off for the last bend. And that's actually a decent lap time. You can work from here. Traction control back on just to make sure for the first corner. Break again at around 105 and use the inside curb. You can use the curb in the left hander there too. Use the brake here a little to get that little bit of extra rotation. I just tap the brake and the, the car will turn. Can use the curb, not too much though, as I just did. You can use that as well, but it's gonna cost you time. See, when I go wide, I usually fucked up somewhere else. So you can hit the throttle, but the traction control will cut everything away. They're the same. Probably not gonna break as good here again as I did the lap before. Short shift, have good traction out of the corner. Just use the non-green bit in that one. 50, 70 and 100. Once the car grips, you just deactivate the uh, traction control. That's another decent lap time. Maybe I should just keep going. This could work out. Not gonna be first place time, but still decent traction control. Check. That was a bit conservative there, but maybe gives me better exit here. Tap the brake. Fourth gear is perfectly fine here, we have the torque in that car. Traction control off. Back on.
Yeah, there's just too much traction control cart. Almost got the penalty. See, I just touched the brake there to get a little bit more to the inside. That's a penalty for sure now. Again, not lucky. the inside curb there a little to get just a tiny bit of extra rotation but be sure to turn it back on two more laps to go I'm actually pushing way too hard to focus on talking that was a bad line lift here compromised all the lines were here hard to correct that now I'm too early on the throttle, have to back out to keep it in the line. Try to control off the bit of oversteer there. Break deep into the turn. Going not as wide this time. That was a little too much, I had like mid-turn over here. That is too wide, that is too early. And a hundred and maybe five or three meters for a break. Short shift on the apex. keeping it inside the track limits I think on my uh, 10 25 run I uh, forgot the traction control there on the 125 run I was doing 44 zeros all the way almost back out the throttle easily wait until it yeah wait until it reach a certain point I didn't had to back out because time, of course. Try to control off. That was too early. And that is wide. That's actually not a lap to learn from. But you can clearly see what happens if you're trying to push too hard. Just overdrive the car completely and your lap time goes nowhere already like almost half a second down on the good lap because that is actually a common mistake if you're having a bad delta or just a bad sector you try to make up for it in the rest of the track where you already were at the limit so it's more likely that you do more mistakes than actually correcting any of the ones you did before. When you made a mistake you really just have to accept it and pull through with a lap as good as you can but not overdrive the car because it takes a bit valuable time. Um, still I think the stint wasn't too bad and I hope you could have seen some of the things I do especially with the throttle and the brake there's quite a small um, like small window where the car responds well to throttle and brake input. Steering is, I don't know, steering is almost kind of easy. You just have to see these uh, tiny corrections I do when I anticipate something that happens to the car, like oversteer, 
happening when I hit the inside curb in, in turn two, for example. I just know the car is going to oversteer, so I can already open the steering a little to not have the rear step out too much. Uh, let's check the lap time. Oh, that's actually not too bad. So even with one or two bad laps down there, I would still be in P2, I think. So, well, this sector is pretty decent, I think. I have to check what the other stint I did. Um, however, I uh, hope you could take away something from it. If you have questions, let me know. I keep an eye out on the comments and uh, get back to you. Bye.